Alright, so this is going to be the landscape material that we end up making throughout this video where you can change how much of the different uh, textures you want per your liking based on the height information and um, also it will have the ability to plant grass in areas that should have grass. You can uh, paint the areas if you want a custom area to have a specific texture and also uh, you can sculpt this on the fly and um, change it will change automatically as you sculpt and if you're wondering maybe this isn't you know the nicest auto shader you've seen this exact process can be changed to make very nice landscapes as you can see here this was made with the exact same shader just putting in some different assets and I think it looks pretty all right so let's hop into it <clears throat> Alright guys, so uh, this is hopefully going to be a somewhat quick, but I'm hoping at least concise tutorial, I am doubtful on quick, uh, on how to make a landscape auto material. Um, so let's just hop straight in. We're going to make a new project in Unreal. Um, we're going to quickly name it something good that fits a naming scheme um, that is very concise and descriptive. And then we are going to have just a blank project. Uh, all of the base settings, we're going to go ahead and start with starter content because I'm going to I'm going to salvage a few of the uh, pieces in there, some materials and stuff like that, so you guys don't have to download a whole bunch of crap to follow along. Should be very easy. We're just going to hop straight in and create a project. Let's go. All right, now that we're in, we are going to drag some things around so we can see. We do not need this level at all, so we are just going to completely forget it ever existed and make a new level and immediately obliterate whatever the heck that weird platform was because we are making a landscape and that was a glorified rectangular prism. So now that we have this nice clean empty slate we are going to go up to this landscape tab up here and we are going to drag this out so we can see a little bit better now you can create new and sculpt till your heart's content but i am very very lazy and i am going to import a file i got off the internet as a height map so that it does all of the work for me you can just download these and look at this, it's already putting out a nice wireframe of what it might look like. I think it's going to look great. I'm going to pay heed to this overall resolution just in case because that information is very nice to know. But you can also find that later on. We're going to go ahead and hit import and we're going to get this started. <clears throat> All right. This is a lovely landscape we have here, but sadly it is very gray and very checkered and slightly lackluster. So we are going to resolve that. So first things first, we need a material for this landscape auto material. I'm going to go down in the content browser and right click and hit material. Down here that will pop up right behind my noggin and you can rename that to like M for material underscore landscape material auto material auto material much more descriptive okay and now we are going to right click on that and do create material instance and then that will have put a material instance why is my webcam even here i don't even think you guys need to see my face but it's right here now we can go up to the place option up here in the top left corner and select that so that we can select our landscape scroll down in this little deal and we can see this landscape material option. Go ahead and select your instance of that material that is behind my noggin and use this little arrow to automatically assign that. And you'll see that we have completely fixed the fact that our landscape is gray. It is no longer gray. We have made it so much better by making it a very specular dark mess that basically shows no information like, holy crap, I can't tell that this is even a landscape now. We need to fix this. 
So to do that, we need to essentially make three materials. Uh, you can make more, you can make less, you can do whatever you want to do, but for this instance, we will do three materials. Stone, grass, and dirt, and then we'll transition between them via the height. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to use material functions, which work as like little nests for uh, materials. So we will do that. If you right click and go to materials and textures and go to material function, it'll put down this, you can type in grass. And then once that is there, you can right click on it, duplicate, and then do dirt. And then once you have that right click and duplicate and do stone. And now that we have a dirt, grass and stone material, we can go ahead and double click on all of those because we are going to need all of those opened up. And now that we have those opened up, let's go ahead and open up our auto material, have that nested up there so that we can access it. And now you guys can um, put in your own textures and materials and all that, but I'm lazy and also it's going to be much easier for you guys to follow along if I steal like an artist and I'm going to go into the starter content, go into the materials and look at this. They have just, they've done a lot of amazing work here of making some wonderful materials that I am going to salvage and repurpose for the sake of this tutorial. I will go into at the very end how you can go about uh, making your own materials. But for now, we're just going to use these. If you want to use your own materials, you can reference the end of the video. We need stone. So what looks like a good stone material? This rock basalt looks great. I'm going to double click it. We need grass. M ground grass looks amazing. And we need dirt. I am not seeing any dirt materials, but this ground gravel looks close enough to me. I think it will do just fine. We'll use it. Okay. Now that we have all these opened up, we're just going to copy paste. So uh, with ground gravel selected, I'm going to zoom out and just left click and drag everything except for this very last node and hit control C. Go over to the dirt zoom out, put my cursor over on the left hand side and hit control V and paste all of those in. I'm going to drag them just so they're a little bit closer. And then uh, to make this an actual material rather than just this, once again, gray checkered ball, we're going to go to our output result node, drag off of it and type in make material. And we want this make material attributes node, which is going to give us all the inputs that we know and love from nodes. Um, we need the base color, which I know is this node right here. This looks like it should be the roughness and yeah, this is definitely the normal. So we will plug that in and now we see we have recreated the uh, gravel texture. Well, it's, it's dirt now. It has been formally accepted as dirt in this video. We're going to save that and we don't need it anymore and we also don't need this. So. We're going to do the exact same thing with grass. We're going to head on over to ground grass, zoom out, left click and drag and select every node except for that very last one on the right. Go over to the grass function. We'll see this lonely node. We're going to give it some friends. We're going to zoom out, hold our cursor over to the left, control V and drag those over just a little bit closer. And we need to once again, make material attributes. And we do that simply by dragging off this input and then typing. We're going to drag this into the base color, this into the roughness and the normal should be right around here. Grab that, drag it up, slot it in. And now we have recreated our grass material. Perfect. What a lovely function. We can save that exit exit. Okay. We need to do the exact same thing for stone. Zoom out, left click and drag, control C, head over to stone, control V. Oh, control V, did I not actually get that? Oh, no, I did have, if you can't, if you can't paste, it's because you have something selected, just click around a little bit, it'll probably fix it. 
we're gonna go ahead and drag off this make material attributes repetition is key to learning I've made this tutorial like 20 times we are definitely learning okay once you have all of those plugged into the respective node inputs you have the base color roughness and normal you should have an amazing looking material we can save it and we can exit out all right now once again we are in a situation where we have a very lonely node we should get it some friends so we're going to go back out to our main editor into the content browser where we can see our new material functions looking fantastic so we need to use them so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select them by left clicking and then holding control and then selecting the other two of the material functions and once you have all three of those selected just drag those into your master material window amazing now we can start making our auto material let's go ahead and lay these out in an order that would make sense it goes grass dirt stone and we will break some attributes so we made some attributes for the functions now we need to break those back open and so we have more than just one singular output so break material attributes which is right here select that and then we have all of these options that we have grown to know and love break material attributes and i know i could just copy and paste but typing is not my strong suit and i need to get better at it so i might as well learn to type by typing more all right so we have all three of these and we're going to just organize them ever so slightly more now we need to make some blending so basically uh all of these materials are great on their own but they're oh so much better once we combine them in a really smart way so to do that we are going to blend them using its uh, world position so to do that we're going to start with stone and we're going to start with the base color because it is the easiest to see so start with your base color drag off and type linear interpolate so what that is uh, it's a blending type of node and it's going to blend a which is our base color from our stone and b which is going to be the base color from our dirt and that, right now, if I plug this in, you'll see it's actually just a 50-50 representation of both of them on top of each other, which is ugly. We need to be smarter of how we're going to do this if we're going to actually make a material that looks dandy. So off this alpha, we're going to drag off that input and type in world aligned blend. And it would help if I knew how to spell aligned right here. And we will have this node, which is amazing. It has also made it to where we only see stone, which is interesting if you wanted to make a cave only world. But we don't, so we're going to use these two inputs, blend sharpness and blend bias. The blend sharpness is going to be how quickly it transitions from one material to the other. So in this case, stone to dirt. And the blend bias is going to be how high up it transitions from stone to dirt. So to make these adjustable later, since we have that instance material, if we make these parameters, that means we can adjust them on the fly using little sliders. So that sounds great because I don't want to dive in here and retype numbers every single time we want to change something. So I'm going to use a scalar parameter. And if we click that, we should name it because otherwise we will be very lost when we have to adjust this. And I'm going to name it stone dirt sharp for the sharpness and we're going to drag off the bias input and use a scalar parameter and call this stone dirt bias okay and for these values to get things started i would recommend a value of let's say for the sharpness we'll do 30 and for the bias we are going to do negative three and now we should start to see we have stone transitioning into dirt which is great now all we need to do is put a little hat on this dirt of grass 
because he would look oh so much more dapper and stunning with a little grass hat. We're going to take off this linear interpolate and we are going to type in linear interpolate because we are going to blend in the grass the exact same way we blended in the stone. So we're going to drag the base color into B. We're going to go ahead and plug this in so we can see what the heck is going on. And then we see that this just looks absolutely ugly. So we need to put in another world aligned blend. And we're going to put this on the top so that we can differentiate it from the one at the bottom. And once again, blend sharpness, we're going to put a scalar parameter that is, we're going to put grass dirt sharp. And we will put another scalar parameter off the bias that is grass dirt bias. And for these, I find uh, you can get away with the bias being, say, negative 5 and the sharpness being 21. And these are just values we're going to tweak later on. But so we can see it in the viewport, I know these values work. But once again, we will be sliding these around so that they look much better for our landscape per landscape. So this is very nice. It is, it's kind of lackluster. We should definitely amp this up a bit by using the rest of these nodes. So, or these outputs, I should say. These these are just, that's, that's just one node. Okay, so doing that is the exact same process for the roughness. So. Let's go ahead and get started. We will start with the stone as we did before. We're gonna drag from the roughness, type in linear interpolate, and we are gonna drag from the dirt, the roughness value into B. And we can use the alpha from this and put it in here. We drag from this one, type in linear interpolate. Once again, grabbing the roughness and putting it into the B slot and grabbing the alpha, putting it in the alpha, and dragging this into roughness. Okay, I'm gonna just quickly move these around ever so slightly so that things just make a little bit more sense. All right, that looks a little bit better to me, maybe not to you. Now we have a little bit more correct lighting, but I think what is really gonna make this really flare, really give it some spice, very spicy is the normal. So to do that is almost exactly the same, but there is one slight difference. But for right now, we're gonna start with the stone, type in linear interpolate, grab the normal from the dirt, put it into B, and here's where things change. Instead of using this alpha, we're gonna use with explicit normal and plug that into the alpha. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for the grass. If I can type, that would be amazing. We're going to grab the normal from the grass, put it in B, grab the with explicit normals from up top, slot it into the alpha and plug this directly into the normal input. And you're going to see something very interesting, very nice. Look at that. The dirt has found its way into the rocks crevices. The grass is trying to grow from underneath the dirt and everything is just blending very, very lovely. Lovely E, very nicely. It's very nice. It's very nice. So, very, very lovely. I am very stoked with that material and let's go ahead and have a look to see what it's looking like. So, we're going to save it and we're just going to have a quick look and see that, wow, we have made a whole grass mountain. That is just absolutely amazing. Hold up. Oh, it's trying. There is definitely a splotch of dirt poking out of that mountain peak. Now here's where that instance becomes very, very nice. So this is the landscape auto material instance. We're gonna double click on that and we're gonna see these little uh, tick boxes here that allow us to adjust some things. Those things that were random values that I typed in earlier can be even more random as we slide them around and see what it changes. So we are going to just go ahead and start sliding around. I'm seeing way too much grass, so maybe I want to bring down this grass dirt bias. 
drop it further into the negative, and now we have absolutely no grass, which is, well, if you're in the business of mowing lawns, either a good thing or a bad thing, actually. Uh, no money, but also uh, you get to go, you know, sit back and uh, watch, uh, watch, your, watch your stories. We're going to just drag that around so that it is pretty pretty good. I don't have a problem with that. That's not bad. And then for I'm seeing way too much dirt and basically no stone at all. So I'm going to go down to this stone dirt bias and drag that real far until I start seeing some of that stone poke out and look real nice. I think that looks pretty good. I'm starting to see a lot more interesting and more realistic landscape now. And it is looking great. And even when I get close, the texture is nice and detailed. And when it's far away, it is not tiled beyond all belief because that would just be completely ugly. It actually scales to the camera, which is great. Now, this is great and all, but... What, like, this is 100% procedural. What do I do if there's something I'd like to change ever so slightly? Um, like, what if I want to paint this rock? Uh, this, this, this needs to be rock for some specific reason. It's, a, it's, you know, somebody put a camp here. Well, we can't do that now, but we can certainly make it so that we can do that. So let's do that real quick. It will not be difficult, I promise. We simply need to drag this node over. It was getting too chummy with these guys. And we need to use what is called a landscape layer blend. So once we have that selected, we'll see this node and it is worthless. What are we supposed to do with this? There is no information at all. That is because we need to go down in this layers tab and add some array elements. We need four total, which will actually count up to three. For some reason, it starts with zero. And we need to type in the following. Zero should be generated because this is going to work as our procedural landscape auto material. And then these are going to be what we paint in manually. We want a grass layer. We want a dirt layer and we want a stone layer. So once we have all of these, we can copy paste this twice because we need three of these total, one for each of these, the base color, the roughness, and the normal. So the generated one is very simple. We're gonna use the exact node tree that we just set up and plug them straight in. So this goes into this and like this, straight lines all the way across, layer generated, into the roughness and the generated layer into the normal. All right, and I know you're thinking, what are we doing with all of these extra nodes? And those are simple. We just need the base color from each of the original functions that we set up. And we need the roughness for each of the functions and the normal as well. So real simple, we go to the layer grass, we grab the base color and we plug it in. We go to the dirt base color, plug it in, and the stone base color, plug it in. And we do that all across the shop. Roughness goes into the roughness tree. Okay, we're getting there. We are certainly getting there. I missed, are you serious? How did I miss? That is very, very upsetting. And now for the normals into the layer grass, into the layer dirt, and oh gosh, finally, the layer stone. And this is great. This will completely fix our issues. Now if we go out, well, let's save them both just to be sure, and we head out, we have once again broken our landscape shader. Why do we keep doing this? We should just stop making changes. It is simply because we need to go over to this little tab here. Oh, let me pull this out just a bit and select the landscape little uh, bit here, go down to paint and we see nothing. And this is a good thing we saw nothing because this is a troubleshooting error that I don't know why it does this. It's because we have the instance so what you need to do to fix this is select your auto material master and assign it to your landscape. They will pop up and then you can just assign your instance material again 
and you will have no issues. For some reason, it does that. I have no clue. We're back on the instance material, and now we can mess with this stuff. So this, we need to select this create layer info and do weight blended layer. Save it anywhere you want because you're never really going to see these things again. I'm going to do it in the content folder so you can see that it does actually, after a very long time, generate this uh, layer that it needs to generate. Uh, the generated one takes the longest. The other ones do it instantly because there is no information really in them. But holy cow, this is taking a minute. Come on. I believe in you. You can do this. There we go. Thank goodness. We have this generated layer info and everything is back to it should. So let's go ahead and do that for grass, dirt, and stone. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the content so I know where they are. But once again, you really don't need to keep track of these dudes unless you're going to, I don't know. You, yeah, you just know where they are. It'd be fine. Okay. And now that we have that, we can paint stone. So I know you're worried that we just broke everything. This is really just compiling the shader over again because as you can see, we have painted stone all over this landscape and made it not so pretty. I'm going to erase that by holding shift while I left click and drag. Amazing. We can put grass on this hill if we really wanted to. It's going to have to recalculate for each one of these layers. But once you do it once, it, would, it doesn't do that. I don't believe this is lovely. Amazing. We have the ability to uh, draw a, a very nice trail across. I can't see you while I'm painting, but I believe I'm drawing a trail-esque looking thing. Maybe it's kind of like a trail. I like it. It's beautiful. Okay. Now we need the last, last little bit to really push this to fully like you could just drop this on any landscape and you'll be good. And that is having some base foliage and, and stuff like that to really spruce things up a bit. So to do that, we need to once again, dive back into our master material right here and use just like three or four more nodes, nothing too bad. Okay. So to do that, we need a landscape grass output which is this little dude right here. If we twirl this down, you can see it already has one enabled called grass. We're actually gonna want a second one. We'll go ahead and name it something very creative, something that no one's ever gonna suspect. And then once we have those two inputs, we can assign, oh, didn't mean to click off, grass types. And what you need to have for those is actually called a landscape grass type you can right click in your content browser go into foliage and it is right here go ahead and select that and name this one grass one and then we will duplicate it and it will name that grass two now to make grass be uh put all over these we need to fill these dudes with grass which sadly I don't believe that the uh, starter content comes with grass hilariously enough. I apologize, but I do know they do come with a bush. And this bush is nice. Man, it is a saucy looking bush. It knows exactly what it needs to be. We're going to put 100 as in fear that it's going to overpopulate with too many of these amazing bushes. And you know what? Because we're feeling real, real spicy today, we're going to add another. And we're going to, we're going to. What is it? What's it called? A bog myrtle or something? Is that, is that here? Maybe not. What else can we put in here? How about a chair? Chairs are great. We're going to put a chair. Could have swore there was more foliage in there. There probably is, but this is just to prove that you can put whatever the heck you want in these things. We need a chair and some bushes. Amazing. Okay. We have that done for grass one, we should do the exact same for grass two. And I will say that for grass two, you normally have to bump the densities a little bit further than you would have. So I'm going to leave this at 400 and I'm on, I'm, I mean, we got to have our chair again. I wonder if they have rocks. Yeah, no, no, they do. But I really like the chair. The chair is great. We need, we need more chairs. I could use an, a, another good chair. 
Amazing. That is certainly going to get us started. We have some grasses and some chairs. If we go back into here, we can assign these. So now we have grass one in the grass slot and grass two in the grass two slot. But that's not going to populate grass because it is nowhere to put things. We want to put things at only where it would make sense where grass is. And to do that, we are simply going to make another landscape layer blend so that it knows where to put the grass. So we're going to actually need two of these. We're going to hit control C and control V for this one. We are going to put generated exactly how we spelt it before generated. And this one, we are going to put grass exactly how we spelled it before. So make sure that these are the same. If you use different naming schemes, make sure they're the same. Plug this one into grass and this into grass too. Grab the with explicit normal from this dude up top and slot that right into the generated. And for the grass, we're actually going to use the normal from the grass function. Amazing. If we hit save, you are going to find out. Now, hold on to your socks because they might get blown off here. We have a lot of things loading, but if we fly over, oh, what is this? What is this? A whole populace of bushes and chairs, you say? Yeah, I know. It's exactly what you were looking for in this lovely world, okay? Now that's going to take a second for the shaders to compile, and while it does, I'm going to fly up to the mountain over here so you can see how amazing this effect really is. Oh yeah. You see that? Those bushes and those chairs, they're migrating across this valley. They cannot climb hills. The grass stops exactly where you'd expect the grass to stop. It grows where it can and does not grow to where it cannot. Oh, now this is nice. This is where your grandma and grandpa would sit right here. Except for normally they'd face that way, but they're facing, you know, they're they're badass. They're facing that way. They're hardcore. So, it's basically fully functioning auto landscape material. You can replace all these assets, all these textures, however you want to make the perfect material and check it out. It is fully functioning to, if you want dirt here, it will not place the grass there. If you want there to be some grass on this mountain, it will grow those chairs and bushes over there. And if you sculpt this, it will adjust in real time exactly how you want it to. So it's a fire and forget material. This will get you started in every world. All you'll have to do if you want a different landscape is adjust some textures plop in the new uh, static meshes and, and, and grass and trees that you want, and it's just going to populate it and get you, get you a great start to your game level, cinematic, whatever the heck you're doing in Unreal these days. This is going to get you started. So, oh, I almost forgot. So if you guys are trying to set up your own materials with uh, textures that you have downloaded or you have uh, and you don't want to use the starter content, this is going to be a quick uh, little uh, showing of how you do that so that your textures uh, transition with the camera so that you have uh, the textures that are close to you or the right size and the textures are far away aren't tiled beyond all belief. They're scaled up so that they look much nicer and then it fades in between those really nicely. And uh, let's get right into it. We are going to make just a whole new material. We're going to name this landscape, uh, tile, land, landscape tiling test. Okay. And we'll go ahead and just assign that. So to make the material behave like that, this is something that took a little while for me to figure out and I will gladly show you what I've learned. So. We basically want to have a material that is uh, such a size near the camera and a different size away from the camera. So that requires two materials. 
So I'm gonna start with a texture sample. Sam sam sample sample. There we go. And we are going to pick a texture that works. I am going to use give me something. Uh, how about, how about, is the what about a stone? A nice cobblestone, uh, that will, you know what, for, for reference sake, this will be perfect. So we are going to control C, control V, and we are going to put a linear interpolate, put this into each, and basically how we're going to get it to change size based on camera position is use this alpha and use a camera depth fade. Okay, and with this fade length, we're gonna set this to a constant or scalar value. Uh, I'm gonna use a constant because I'm not gonna use this, but you should probably use a scalar so you can adjust it later and put it to something like 2000. That's probably a decent number. And now we need to set these to be uh, different sizes. We're gonna go ahead and plug this into the base color so we can kind of see what's going on and we are going to set up the UVs. Now for landscape UVs, it's ever so slightly different than what you'd think. So this is what I found works for landscapes. Drag off the UV node and type in divide. And for A, you want a landscape layer coordinate. And for the B, you want to put a constant that is the resolution of your landscape. I know that this is 4033 because of when I imported it, but if you don't remember, select it and go in the details panel. It'll say right here, resolution, and then I'll say what you need to type in. Mine is 4033. So I will type that in 4033. And we need the exact same nodes down here and plug those in. And to get the uh, scaling correct, we need to go in these landscape coordinates. I'm going to put this one at 0 0.05 and say this one at 0 0.0005. And actually, I, I think this needs to be quite a bit higher. I think it should actually be closer to 5,000. And now if we save this and we go back to our landscape, we should see that closer to us, the tiling is nice and small, but farther away, it gets nice and big, because otherwise, this texture would just look very, very bad. That fade in really saves it. It doesn't show here, but it will definitely show later. So if you guys need to know how to do that, it's simply this setup. And that's the premise of how you make this uh, material. You just continue that on for the rest of them and plug that into your material function like we did the starter contents material. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, I may or may not be able to answer them. I'll be honest, I learned how to do this two days ago. I got really excited and wanted to share with people. If they didn't know how to do it, there's a really easy way to make an auto material. Um, I am very new to Unreal, so I will hopefully be learning lots and be sharing more frequently. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, don't be scared to ask in the comments. If you want to say I did it wrong, please tell me. I would gladly learn because holy crap, I rarely do things the right way. I do it the way that gets results fastest. So a right way would be nice to know. Thank you very much for watching. I've been uh, this guy, this guy. Webcams are weird. I'm sorry if it was just in the way the entire time. If there's an overwhelming amount of people, basically the only person that watches this is my, is my mom. If my mom tells me to get rid of the webcam, I will. I am really rambling. Goodbye.